In part one, we covered actually creating the diorama and you know adding just the, the core pieces we wanted to the story. Now in this video, we're gonna go through and we're actually gonna light this. Um, so a couple things to keep in mind as we're doing this. Uh, the most important thing is that we want to draw the user's attention to the story, to elements within this. Um, and we'll go through as well and add little splashes of light here and there to make sure that we're highlighting what's happening in our scene. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've gone ahead and removed all of the original lighting that we put in the level. Um, in part one, we just simply added a couple lighting components just to help us see what was happening. Um, so I've gone ahead and just deleted those guys. So I'm gonna go in and let's just add the core components of what we need. So I'll switch back to lit mode. We'll go in, we'll add all directional light here. Uh, let me go ahead and go back to this. Let's go ahead and turn off our uh, preview shadow so we don't see that. All right, so there's our directional light. Let's add a skylight. And then I'm gonna go in here as well and just add a BP sky sphere just by simply typing that. Um, now you can choose to add your own sky sphere, um, just a material and kind of a, a cube or a, um, a sphere map. Uh, but for those purposes, there's one built into the engine, so we'll just use that. And then finally, the last thing that we need is a post-processing volume. So I'll go ahead and drop that in the middle. Um, and that is the start of our lighting and what we'll need for it. So, um, oh, actually one more thing that I forgot. We'll go ahead and add in um, a reflection capture as well. So we'll just do a sphere reflection capture, kind of place it in the middle. That's fine. Uh, yeah, it should be the bounds of what it needs, captured scene, and totally good to go. So I'll go ahead and select all these guys. Let's go ahead and move them up to our environment. Um, and then let's go ahead and start configuring everything that we need for this. Um, so to start with, actually, I'm just going to select my post-processing volume. I'm going to scroll down and just make sure that we've got um, the infinite set unbound set to check. And then really all I want to focus on right now is just making sure that my scene is neutral. Um, and that's going to be underneath this uh, lens roll-up. Exposure, I'm going to check my min and my max brightness and set both of those to 1. And what that's going to do is that's going to ensure that um, you've probably noticed it in the engine by default that when you look at dark spots, the engine tries to brighten them up. Uh, when you look at bright spots, it tries to drop those down. Um, so what this is going to do, this is going to ensure that that doesn't happen. So if I zoom into here in the dark, it stays dark. Same thing if I'm looking at the bright points, they stay bright. All right, so... That covers our post-processing volume. The next thing that I want to do is um, focus on a little bit. Actually, let's take our um, our skylight since uh, we dropped it in before sky sphere. It didn't actually capture the environment, so I'm just going to select my sky sphere and I'm just going to scroll down to recapture. And there we go. So now it's kind of capturing the um, uh, the additional scene that's around there, um, and that start with. So let's actually check. I thought that I'd turn this off, but preview shadow indicators stay off. There we go. Okay. So the first thing that I want to really target is my directional light. That is my primary source of light, which is kind of acting as our sun. Um, now I'm going to go into game mode by pressing G. And the, the critical thing, as I mentioned earlier, that we want to focus on with this particular light is drawing the user's attention to um, what it is that we want in the scene. So the way we theme this, we kind of have this, you know, mother baobab tree kind of in the middle here. It's like maybe a little shrine or something. So ultimately, we want to draw the player's attention to, um, to this. So I'm going to select my directional light. And I'm going to go ahead and let's go back to G so we can see it. Um, I'm going to keep my world space. I'm just going to simply rotate this light to where it starts to um, start to kind of cast some shadows and bring some light to this tree. Now, if you remember before, too, I said, you know, keeping the idea of finding these little splashes of light. Right. So if we went, you know, head on, everything's lit. That is a pretty boring look. Everything just looks like it's being lit by just a really bright spotlight. Not what we want. But if we jump back in and I simply rotate this a little bit, we start getting those shadows. Notice how we've got this really nice, it kind of draws attention to the middle of the tree. We still have some of our pots highlighted. Over on this cart, we're kind of getting this little splash of light coming in. Those are the money tickets that we're looking for. Those are the things that we want in here. So I like the direction of this light. I think it works well. Um, if we kind of fly around, look at different things, you know, we're getting little splashes of light, some shadow in places that we really want it. Um, 
So I'm, I'm happy with the direction of this light. So that's the first part. The second thing that we want to do is make sure that it's it's not too bright. Now I'm going to set this to movable so it gets rid of the fact that you know we, we need to build lighting. And I'm just going to drop this down. Now 3.14 is kind of a, a neutral, very well lit light that should be fine. Granted, we're kind of doing uh, the way the light's set up right now, kind of a midday. So we can bump this up a little bit higher than that. So I might go up to like, a, let's say four, and that should be a good start. Now, because this is, you know, we're using this African styled landscape, um, it's probably not going to be a white light. And so what I want to just add just a little bit more color to this just to kind of help um, just boosting up a little bit and, and give a little bit more richness. So we'll kind of find something that's happy. I'm cool with that one. I think that works really well. And so that completes our directional light, our main source of light. Um, so the next thing we want to move on to is actually adjusting our sky sphere before we go to our skylight because that skylight will inherit those colors. So let's go ahead and address that. So with our sky sphere, there's a couple things that we want to change in here. Um, the first thing is that we can actually link this to our directional light. And what that will do is, you know, if we look at our, our sky sphere, let me take the clouds up a little bit so you guys can see here. Um, there's a couple components with this. Um, in particular, there's a sun disk, there's these clouds, and then we've got our zenith, which is our, our color at the very top, a horizon color. Um, and then I believe a uh, overall color that we can affect. Um, so if we linked it to our directional light, it would use that light um, to change things, which is not what we want in this case because um, I actually want to control the coloration of this. So with that, what we would do is we would go through here and um, if, if we try to change, say for example, the cloud color, and I change color, nothing happens. That's because I've got this colors determined by sun position it's automatically set in all these. So if I uncheck this, it's then now going to use all of these colors here. So if I go to coloration of clouds, there we go. Absolutely hideous, not what we want. So I'll go ahead and undo that. Uh, but that ultimately is what we want to control. We want to go through here and change the different colors to what we want. So I'm going to delete this sky sphere and I'm simply just going to paste in uh, the one from the actual assets, which has all the colors that we want. So uh, again, colors determined by position is unchecked. Our zenith color, horizon color, and cloud cover, um, cloud color, give us everything that we want that really help to fill it out. So you can go in and change the colors you want, but I think these work well. So we'll move this guy back up. Let's go ahead and delete that. And now we have our sky sphere that's in here, which is perfect. So the next thing that we want to do is actually go into our skylight and recapture the scene. There we go. So now it has recaptured all the colors that we just put in our sky sphere. Um, so that concludes that one. And now let's readjust the skylight a little bit to help balance it. So to start with, we can take our intensity. You can see that, you know, it's that's quite potent. So how do we find that good value? How do we find something that works? Um, the best method that I've found in my approach is just to simply go up to your directional light. You can hide it, which will disable it. And you can even go in and hide your sky sphere. Uh, so then we're looking at just the information that's being presented and cast into the scene by the sky light. So if we take this down to zero, you can see um, it does nothing. Of course, what just happened? What just happened is, is that as we're adjusting this intensity, um, because we have it set to SLL captured scene, it is uh, looking at all that information and recasting that as its light. But as soon as we change the intensity, it recaptured the scene, which we have no lights, we have nothing. That's why it's black. So we'll turn these guys back on, go back in here, we'll recapture, um, and then we can just adjust. But what we're looking for is kind of in these, these light, uh, I'm sorry, in the darker areas, how much light is being cast in there. So, you know, we don't want too much and we don't want too little. So if we go to about one, that's fine. Two's not bad, maybe 1.5. Let's see. That's probably a little bright because um, we do want some. We do want some shadows there, so I'll take it down to maybe say about 0.8, um, and that should be fine. Now ours is set to stationary, which is fine. We could change it to movable. Um, stationary if we rebuilt lighting, hence why it says we need to rebuild some things. Um, but for this purposes, that's totally fine. So okay, um, I'm actually gonna check something real quick. Yeah, maybe we'll darken it just a little bit more, just so we've got some shadows. 
Okay, so that pretty much concludes um, the the basic setups of our lights. Um, and now what we can do is uh, to further kind of refine this, adding just maybe some smaller additional fill lights to help uh, fill in the gaps or draw, you know, the uh, um, who's ever looking at this, draw their attention to certain aspects. So let's go ahead and cover that real fast. So the, the last bit to cover kind of this lighting your diorama uh, comes down to drawing the player's attention and uh, to, to the story that you're trying to ultimately unpack here. And what you may find is that there's some areas that maybe don't quite get lit as much as you'd like to, or you'd like to just add a little bit of extra um, pop or just you know directionality to this to help draw the player in a little bit more. So if I go down here to like this cauldron, you know, right, it's kind of sitting in this uh, the shadowed area. It's probably more black than what I want. So the trick that we can do with this is I can go in and I can actually add like another little point light here. And we'll just kind of drag it in and maybe set it up something similar to where like our, our sky is coming from. And then I can just warm it up a little bit and then maybe come in here and just drop the intensity maybe down to like two, three, and maybe we'll go four. Okay. So if I go back to game mode real fast and I just show and hide this, you can kind of see what's happening here. We're just we're filling in a little of those gaps to help just again draw draw the attention of um, you know who's ever viewing this in a little bit more. So we can go through here as well. Maybe you know this little pot. Maybe we want something here. I'll activate game mode again real fast. Let's move it into place. Maybe something like this. Maybe there's like some bounce light coming in. Uh, let's go ahead and change again the color of this guy too. That's pretty good. And this one, I do want to take the attenuation radius down a little bit. So I don't want it to affect nearly as much. And then we'll maybe go to say like four. And we'll zoom back out, go to game mode. And then you can see here, so if we show and hide this, uh, maybe that's a little too potent. Maybe we'll go two, we'll go three. But you can see what we're doing here. The ultimate effect is that we're we're just adding these little splashes of light to help draw um, the user's attention into these little stories that we've crafted. Uh, and then we can go through again as well. We can go through the whole scene, look for other little areas where we have dark points. Maybe, you know, in the back here, it's not as nice. Maybe we could add another little point light or something. Uh, maybe we'll go here, bring this up. We'll warm it up a little bit. You know, something something that just helps to kind of fill in uh, the gaps a little bit. Maybe we'll turn off shadows. So, you know, all we have here at this point light is just a little splash of color to give some form. Um, things like that. So, you know, that's that's the general principle of, you know, adding the additional lights in there to help fill in the scene. But other than that, um, that should cover the whole lighting process of our scene um, and setting it up. So I hope that helps. Um, again, we'll in part three, we'll actually cover more of the cinematics. Um, but I always, as always, I appreciate you guys watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.